God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and we're going to go on a trip to today. At the last few shows we've been traveling through Italy in fact, our last episode, we were on the Italian Riviera. And this is the photograph of the painting that I had started on the last show. And I'd like to show you now the finished painting. Uh, it's all completed and framed, and I'm very happy with it. It's right here. As you can see, I used a lot of palette knife, a lot of rough, rough um, strokes and in the, in the rocks and in the water. The thing that I want you to understand is that we're way up high on this little pathway. Uh, we're going from one town to another in the Cinque, Cinque uh, Terra area along the Mediterranean, Italian Mediterranean. And the only way to go there is by train path or these narrow walkways on the mountains. And so we're way up high and I'm looking down on these rocks and the water as it's crashing onto the rocks. And that's why we have more of an aerial perspective in our painting today. Now, um, as I told you in the last show, we're going to be going on to Assisi. Assisi was a really amazing experience for me because as, as you can see here, I have chosen to paint just a little corner of the area. Uh, I mean, while I was there, so many wonderful things happened to me. Um, it is the birthplace, the home of St. Francis of Assisi. He's, his um, um, shrine is there, and um, there's, it's just a marvelous town that's on a mountain. It's really beautiful, and as I was walking up this cobblestone uh, walkway to go to see more of the town, I came across this little corner, and I thought it was so unique because here are all the flowers and greenery, and yet here's a sign that says garden, and the arrow is pointing this way. Now, doesn't it, away from the flowers, doesn't it make you wonder if this is what the flowers look like, what must the garden look like? That's the question with this painting. So anyway, um, without further ado here, I think I better get busy. I'm just working with a, a regular, a regular palette. It is, has uh, no earth colors on it. I like to work without the earth colors and make my own. And uh, as you can see, my palette is pretty well, um, it's been used a long time. My canvas, I have taken the liberty of toning with a yellow ochre acrylic so that my drawing is all completely dry on the canvas. And I have an idea of where my uh, subjects are, all right, and my shadow and my light shapes. And um, I did it like this because I wanted you to see what it was like to just mass in a, a, a painting rather than, rather than drawing. I just massed in the shapes. So now we'll start with the oils. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this very dark that we see back in here. I want to get that in first. So I'll take my palette knife and I'm going to mix some green with 
a little bit of ultramarine blue to darken it. And I don't want it too terribly um, garish, and so I'll just add a little bit of red to that. And that'll kind of gray it down because red's the complement of the green. For those of you that have been watching this show, uh, I really thank you for joining me. Um, I've had uh, some people come up and, and comment that they're enjoying the show, and I invite you to um, go to my website and e email me and, you know, let me know if you like the show. I am really open to that. Um, anyway, so we're just going to get right in here and put these darks in. And after we get those laid in, and you notice I'm not, I'm not, you know, going to do this with a lot of fuss. I'm just want to get this dark underpainting underneath here and where I see the darks. And it's very dark down in here. After I get going a ways, I will pull the blue greens of these leaves that are around this bright yellow uh, green petunia plant that is coming out of this pot right up here. So, okay. But for now, I want to lay in what is behind there, and then I can pull the rest of it out. When I went to Assisi after visiting the Basilica and walking up the hillside, I, I met a, a friar and he was dressed in his robe and sandals and um, and he was had the belt. His belt was a rope tied around his waist. And I asked him if he would, if it was okay if I took a picture of him. He was so gracious. And he said, sure, sure, where would you like me? And oh, it was kind of a funny thing because when he sat down, because of this, he was, you know, he was a big man. And uh, when he sat down, the, um, the way the robe, his cassock, billowed out, he looked just about as wide as he did tall. And that was kind of a, of course, I didn't tell him that, but it's just I remember that about him. And I remember his big smile. He had the most beautiful big smile. Then later on, as I was walking up the, the road to the, or the, I don't know what you'd call it, the street, I guess, this cobblestone pathway. And I, I, St. Francis is my patron saint, and I don't want to go off onto religion with you, but um, I was reading something the other day that I found very interesting that that uh, after 9-11, uh, in San Francisco, they had a, a gun turn-in program where if you turned in your gun, they gave you some sort of a reward or something like that. And so many people turned in their guns after, right after 9-11 that they were able to make melt all that um, metal down and make a, a big statue of St. Francis. And when you come into the um, city, it's somewhere in a prominent place in, in downtown San Francisco. And I thought that was really a, a, a cool thing. Okay, now we have back here, we have these bricks. And anyway, so getting back to this is my my time in St. Francis, I mean in, in Assisi. Um, I wanted to bring something back. And for years, I've wanted a statue 
of St. Francis for my backyard, you know, because he was the patron saint for the animals and the, and the nature. And I wanted to make a statue of him or get a statue of him to put back there so I could see him out my kitchen window. Well, I'm walking along and I'm checking out all these stores these little shops, and of course there's everything in the world, you know, and I want desperately to get something. I'm on a budget, as we most, most of us are when we're traveling. And um, right now I'm mixing up the stone color for right in here. It's taking me a moment to get exactly what I want. Anyway, so, nope, that's a little too green. Um, I'm looking in all these shops, and then I go past this one, and I see through the window this gorgeous, tall, about three feet tall, perfect statue of St. Francis. It is gorgeous. And I run in, and I ask the shopkeeper in my in my English, I know no Italian, and what uh, there, now I've got it. Can you see the difference? You see how that color matches where the other one didn't? The other one was too green, that's why. Anyway, so I run in there. I'm going to just put this on with a palette knife. This is our shadowy part. Uh, let's see, this knife isn't good, though. I need a painting knife. This is a this is a palette knife and and this is more of a painting knife and the difference is that it's smaller and sharper edges and you can get a nice nicer cleaner look. Anyway, so I go into the shop. I ask the fellow, "How much is that statue?" Reminds me of that song, "How much is that dog in the window?" Anyway, um, he tells me, and I say, let me think about it. And I walk out of the shop. Now, I'm in a terrible hurry because it's almost, I've almost used up all my time. And the bus is, is just about ready to leave. And I have to be back down this great big hill um, to catch that bus. So anyway... I start down, and something inside me just said, Kitty, if you don't get that, you never will. You'll never find anything quite like that again. If you don't get it, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You have to get it. So I turn around, and I run back to the shop, and I tell the fellow, Look, I'm in a really big hurry. If we can do this really, really quick, you know. So I pull out my credit card and I pay for it. And he's trying to be very cooperative and do everything very much in a hurry, too. And um, we, we do the deal and he gets my address. He's going to ship the statue to me and, in, um, you know, here in where I live. And, and, oh, I mean, everything is going just fine, okay? And then I run down the hill, and ah, I'm elated. I am so happy. I'm thrilled. I, I have my St. Francis. And anyway, everybody that's with me all congratulate me. They're all really happy for me and everything, you know. So we get back. Now, where we were staying was, oh, maybe a hundred miles away from a CC. So by the time we got back that night to our hotel, there was a message at the hotel from my husband saying that he had gotten this strange call from some man that he could not hardly understand in Italy saying something about my credit card. Well, don't you know, I had gone off and 
ran off, I guess I should say, and left my credit card in within his shop. And he was such an honest man that he immediately called my husband and um, told him about it. And so then I had our tour guide call him, and he said that he, we were in the we were going to go to another another site. And I, the tour guide called him because she spoke Italian, and she told him to please, you know, overnight the card to the new spot where we were going. So that was towards the weekend. That was on a Friday. And the, my credit card was the only thing I had for money. Um, so I had to borrow money <laughs> from the tour guide in order to eat. This is a true story. I'm not kidding. But uh, I made it that weekend. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't die of hunger. And... Um, um, Sure enough, Monday morning, there was my credit card in the mail. And then I worried, was, you know, was this fellow going to be able to ship this huge statue to all the way to America, to my home here in Wisconsin, and, not, and it not be uh, ruined, hurt? I mean... Uh, I was really worried about that. Like, was he going to pack it okay? And, and was he going to uh, be careful with it? And, oh, I, I, well, anyway, end of the story is that I got the statue. It was in perfect condition. In fact, it was packed with so much bubble wrap that I don't think I've ever seen uh, not bubble wrap, those little, those little styrofoam beads. It was like when I opened the box, it was like it was raining, these little styrofoam beads. It was just hysterical how many of them were in there. I mean, he took no chances whatsoever. I was so thrilled at what a gracious man he was, how hard he tried to get me back my... my um, Car, credit card and, and how honest he was and what a beautiful job he did with sending me to the statue. So then I had to worry, well, now what's my husband going to think? I, you know, I didn't really want him to know about this, okay? You know, here I'd spent all this money and I wanted to tell him in person. And, you know, I mean, here the guy calls him up and tells him that not only did I spend all that money, but I forgot my card and left it there. You know, I mean, like... This is not anything your husband wants to hear. So <laughs> anyway, when the statue came, my husband liked it. And he even suggested that we keep it in the living room rather than putting it outside because it's, he says it, it, won't, it won't hold up outside. It's too beautiful and it won't weather well. So. So that was the end of that story, but it was exciting while it happened, I'll tell you. I want to get some of this dark right under here. Now you notice I just kind of went right over these uh, iron posts right here that are covering this window and the window box. And I did that on purpose because uh, later on I will wipe out and put those back in. Um, I, might, I might not have a chance to do that while you're watching, but when I take this with me back to my home studio, I will be working on that. This is... My goal right now is to kind of try to get this paint on here and get the darks and the, the, the lights. I'll come back in and later and make this look more like um, 
the uh, plaster. They look like bricks that have been a real pale brick. And you're seeing this as being very white. And that's because it's a photograph. It truly was not that color. It was not that white. It was more this kind of peachy color that I'm making it down in this area here. And we do have those shadows in there that will be coming down. I might switch back over to a brush I, if I decide that this isn't uh, looking quite the way I want it to. I'll switch back to the brush. You know, it, it's just going to a country like Italy when it is has been a dream your whole life that you go there and find your roots is such a life-changing experience. I don't feel that I've ever felt, I've traveled many times, many different places. I've never felt more connected to a place as I did there. And I guess that's because of my Italian blood. The fact that my father's people immigrated from Italy so makes a big difference in how you feel about things, I guess. And it is a beautiful country. I found out something interesting the other day from a young Italian girl who um, her last name ends with I. And, you know, usually you think of Italians, their names end with O. And she explained to me, she says, no, if you're from the northern Italy, as my uh, relatives were, your name ends with I, and if you're from the south, your name ends with an O. And I'm going to watch that very carefully. I want to see if that, how that works out, if that really works out that way. I find that very interesting. Okay, now I think we better get some of this dark up here on there. And I'm seeing kind of a grayed green. It, it, it is quite dark. There's a great contrast on this painting. As we're working our way across the canvas, journeying across the canvas, you see there is this strong, strong darks and very light lights. But we have to realize that the photo has you know, because it, we, we took this from a photo, it has altered the way that we, what we see. It's really, in life, was not as dark as it appears on this photo, nor are the lights as light as I explained to you before. There we go. I want that nice and smooth. There we go. And then we're going to put in the flower. Hold, um, oh, goodness. I can't think of what that's called. Um, I know that's a flower pot. Um, well, OK. Anyway, I know that it holds plants. Sometimes, you know, I'm so far onto the right side of my brain where I'm just seeing and experiencing, it's hard for me to think of the names of, of uh, objects. And, um, but I don't worry about that though, because that just means I'm really into what I'm doing. If I'm not on the left side of my brain, the analytical side that gives me answers, then I, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm good. Okay, I kind of like this. Maybe I'll dull it with a little bit of gray. There we go. Okay, so here is this planter. That's what it's called, Kitty, a planter. 
and it's coming right across here and right down there. Comes out just a little bit. Okay. And then that's a little dark, right? Going back in here where it turns. I think I'll switch over to a brush. Let me see here. Okay, I do see some, I see some light area. I, I have what's called a wipeout tool. And when I see things that I want to take away from in my painting, I can just use my wipeout tool. And you, you see this light right up here? It, obviously there is a window there on the, that we're seeing through this window and it creates a little bit of light. So I'm going to wipe that out and I'm going to come with a brush and put a nice kind of a, of a sky color in there. There we go. And then over here, as I look a little closer, I'm seeing that this has a little more of a goldish effect there, like that's wood on the inside. So we'll put that on there. Kind of a brown, not too dark. Mixing up, I like to make my own browns. Okay, and we'll put just a little bit of that in there, and that'll show up that that is, and I know that's very subtle. You may not be able to pick that up off, um, on camera, but then there's something very dark coming up right here, right next to it. This is going back like that, and this is a little darker here. It turns where it turns a corner there and comes down. And then we have this kind of a brick, pale used brick color that is going across here. And that's coming here and here here and here. Okay, I'm trying to be a little more careful um, for you so that you can, you can um, have a better idea of where I'm going. I, I feel I'm working a little much, a little too much in the abstract. And so I'm trying to be a little more careful and give you some of the details that I, that I see so that you can kind of get a grip on, on what we're doing here. And um, let me see, we'll go back to this brush. I think we'll go back into some brown and we will put it over here. Okay, now then, this right here is quite dark right in here because that is, um, this is like a window and that's the inside of that window and it's coming down right there and it's a little bit darker right here in behind this pot, where this pot is. Okay, now by changing my stroke, 
you know, all these strokes are going this way because that's the movement of the stone. By changing my stroke, I now give you the feeling of a, a window. And I see that this shape is a little slanted. It's all slanted a little bit. Let that come in like that. And there we go. There, now I do see, I do see that there is a, better take a smaller brush for this. There is a um, blind back here and it's going at an angle Okay, and then I look again and I see that this needs to be raised or lowered right here. There we go. And we need to put this on again. Uh, this back here. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to come across there and try to make some lines just to give you an idea of, of what that is going to look like. Mm, that's not working out too good. You know, some days. just doesn't pay. But you know, I think I think that it's good for you, the viewer, to see that artists, even experienced artists, struggle at times. And I am struggling. And that's okay. I will work out my problems. I just want that light in there. That light is important to me. And now I'll take this across again and see if I can make it look any, any better. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that works or not. There we go. That's down there. And then this has a really bright uh, little turn right here. And that is showing the side of that. And then um, down here on the bottom of the window box or the planter is a little bit of a darker shadow. And that I think is will not make that paint come like this. I have a ton of paint on here, way too much, but that's okay. We'll just struggle along. Don't give up on me. There, that's good enough. That shows that up. All right. Now we'll take another brush here and we'll put some dark underneath this. Hmm. And then we'll have to reinforce this stone again, or the little brick ledge. Okay, and then over here is something that is kind of a tan color coming down. And 
then we have more of the of the brick and it's in the shadow so it's going to be a little darker up here and like I said I'm not worrying about those um, those posts I'll put those on later just want to get this I think I'll take some of this from here and just bring it over here. That works good. That way I know I'm, I have color harmony. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes when you paint, no matter how hard you try, it doesn't turn out quite like you had envisioned. And so the best thing to do when that's happening to you is, is you know, put it away, and come back another day. Obviously, I can't do that right now because you have joined me and we're taking this journey together. And if it's a rough journey, then so be it. Okay, there, that's a little better. I'll grab some of this light and put it down in here. I think the brush is much better. It's not as thick as the making the paint not as thick and giving us more of the feel of, of um, brick. I think that looks a little better. Mm-hmm, much better. Yep. You know what happens sometimes is I'll be struggling along, and about the time that I that I re really starts to come together, well, that'll be the end of the time. You know, time will be up. I only have a have an hour, and <laughs> so it's kind of frustrating because if I want it to work and work really good and 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 really give you something that you are happy you watched, why? It's kind of disappointing when I run out of time. I see some, I'm gonna make that a little darker in there. I don't want that uh, sign to be so. Okay, that looks a little bit more like the, um, like the brick. We have a little bit more of a feel of brick in there now with uh, those marks. Okay. Okay. There we go. And then we still need some some light in here to show that this is If you could have seen this in person, it was so beautiful. Another thing that really um moved me about Assisi was that everywhere I went there were roses. It was just gorgeous. These rose gardens it was so pretty. You know the the church that houses the um, shrine for St. Francis was devastated in an earthquake some years ago and our guide told us that people from all around the world um, sent money to restore the church and the basilica. It was just amazing and you could see some of the areas that had been d damaged that they were still had iron bars up because they weren't completely uh, finished with them. Well, I think that I, I probably should get this area here covered and where this cute little sign is that says garden with the arrow pointing the other way, I get such a kick out of that. That is, that is cute. 
I, didn't, I do want to color this area here in. There we go. Yeah. Alrighty. And I think I'm going to take a different brush now. And I'll mix up, as I was telling you yesterday, I'll mix up uh, some of the, uh, the green and the red and make up that nice, beautiful kind of a bronzy color. Maybe it needs a little bit of gold in it today, too, because um, that sign to me actually looks like bronze. Um, so I think I'll make it just a little bit redder. And I'm just going to kind of uh, work that in real quick because I know that we're getting pretty close on time. And I do want to get over here to these marvelous little um, flowers here. The, that's pretty important to me. So. There we go. We'll just get this in here and, you know, right now we're pretty much what I'm trying to accomplish on this show is to just sort of give you an idea of where I'm going and what my shapes are. Um, and you're probably wondering why in a beautiful city like Assisi would I choose to paint just a, this little corner, this little window in this little corner? And it's because, like I told you a long time ago on the show, I'm not trying to make this a travel log. I'm just trying to give you intimate moments of the journey, my journey, as you and I journey across the canvas. And so that's why I don't pick landmarks necessarily. I just pick little things that speak to me emotionally. That's very important. Now, I'll just take, I think what I'll do here, I think I'll just take the end of my brush and see if I can't scratch out the words garden. There. It's kind of difficult printing it because it's really old world like with lots of curly cues and it's very, very close together. I hope you're not hearing this horrible scratching sound that I'm making. I don't even know if you folks can, you the viewers, if you can see this. It's not coming up. Maybe I'll just try going in with a little bit of, of the uh, black and just try to um, put that in just a little better for you with a, just a little bit of color. Okay. I have that kind of scratched in. Now I'll just, I'll take a, a small brush and we'll just go into some black. Now, it's like I was telling you before, my object at this point in the painting is just to give you an idea of where I'm going with this. So I'm just doing it um, rather in a hurry. I. I want you to be able to see the garden sign so that you can see that that's where it is. But the next time you folks see it, when you tune in to see the next show, you are going to see this all completed and then you'll understand what I've been talking about. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. I think you can see that that says garden. Yeah. All right, now I want to get to the pretty part. Okay. So I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to go into my blue greens. I have some beautiful, oops, we need a little light on that. 
Now I'm using a different color of green. Now I'm using a viridian green. It's very cool. I keep all my warm colors um, on my palette on, on one side and I keep the others, uh, the cool colors on the other side. So I'm picking this color up from the, the cool side of the palette. And I'm just kind of like scumbling them in there. We just, we don't really need to see detail at this point. We just need to know that something's coming. Something's going to happen in that area. That's what we need. There. And you, and you can see the little, the little branches coming out. Need a smaller brush for that. Let's see here. Little tiny branches are coming out and going across and and down and and there'll be like a a little leaf on the end and and um, I love to make the dancing. I call it the dancing brush move when I when I make the leaves and they they just kind of appear by just with a little roll of the brush and just a little, I like the way that looks. Of course, I guess you've all figured out by now that I really love thick paint. I love to paint. This is called alla prima, and uh, I believe that's an Italian word, very ap appropriate for the show. I've been thinking, what should we do next show, the next show? I've been wondering, where, where should we go? Should we leave Italy? Or should we do one more, one more place in Italy? I think the place I would want to go next, if we're going to stay in Italy, is the um, Venice. Venice was fun, and I've got lots of stories to tell you about Venice. I think we'll go to Venice, and then we'll see. Now, that's a hanging pot right there, okay? So I'm just blocking it in, okay, for the location, and I'm going to put a little highlight on it so that I can see where that lightest part is. That's one of the most important things about a painting is, is seeing where, where's the light, where's the shadow. Without the light, the dark, there is no light. You always have to remember that. I guess it's that way in life too. Without the dark, there is no light. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> Now I want to get a nice, bright, bright green, bright yellow, beautiful green. And I'm taking my darker sap green and I'm mixing it with a cad yellow pale. And I'm making a, a very bright green that's going to be coming out of that pot. Now, I don't know how I got that red on the brush, but that's okay. That's okay, those petunias have the reddish pink in them. So that's all right. You know, see, in order to really enjoy it when you're painting, you have to lose yourself and let the brush do whatever it wants to do. Let the brush take you. You really, when you're painting, you're not the master. You're not the one that's in control here. There's a force much higher, much bigger, much larger than you that is leading you and is guiding you. And you just, you're the instrument, but you're not the master. So you just have fun and do the best you can. And when you do that, what more could you ask for? That's the beauty of being able to paint the beauty of, of just to be able to capture on canvas some semblance of 
what the beautiful nature God has created for us to look at and enjoy. I have to tell you, on my mailbox this morning, a spider had made a beautiful web. And because there was so much moisture in the air, the web was all covered with little, tiny, microscopic beads of dew. And as the sun hit the spider web, it glistened and it looked like the spider web was made of the tiniest, most precious little beads, silver beads. It was gorgeous. It sparkled. It was so beautiful. You know what I did? I immediately ran back into the house and grabbed my camera and went out. The neighbors probably thought I was crazy because here I am with my camera taking pictures of my old mailbox. <laughs> they probably couldn't see that there was a gorgeous piece of art on the mailbox. I don't know. Sometimes we artists do funny things, but that's okay. That's okay too. Trust me, it's okay. Be yourself. Be who you want to be. Enjoy. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy your life. Be thankful for what you have. It's all about that sort of stuff. I don't know, I guess I'm feeling a little philosophical today. I think traveling to Assisi made me see things in a different, in a different way. It made me feel a little more appreciative of all my blessings that I have and am able to share. That's so important that you share what you've been given. And that's what I try to do with my show painting journeys. I'm trying to share with you, the audience. OK, now I like that. Now we got some stuff happening here. Now we'll just mix up some. I know that we don't have a whole lot of time left. So I think I'll just take a little tip of the paper towel here. And I think I'll just use that and just wipe out in a few little spots here where I have some little, um, I just said the name of those flowers and doggone it, I forgot it already. Boy, petunias, that's right. Petunias, what a memory I have. I get so lost in what I'm doing that I completely forget. Gosh, there we go. I don't know if this is what happens when your hair turns gray <laughs> or white or whatever. Is this what happens? You, you start forgetting what everything is? No, I prefer to believe that I live on the right side of my brain. And that is not the analytical side, as I said before. That is the side that makes beautiful, beautiful um, creations. Now you watch and see what happens here. Now I'm getting excited. I'm getting really excited because this is the fun part, making these little flowers pop making these flowers come to life. I've been waiting the whole show to show you what's going to happen right now. And it's amazing. You just twist that brush and dance it around and little tiny flowers appear. It's wonderful. And you, you know, I mean, I don't know why the sign says the, the garden is in this direction. This is where the garden is. It's a hanging garden, and it's beautiful. Now, the flowers usually grow in clusters, so I'm putting some of them together. And then I'll come back in, and I'll take some light, 
and make a nice, pretty, lighter color. And I think I'll add a little bit of phthalo red rose because I want these to really show up for you. There. Now, there's a little grouping of them here. And you see that? You see what's happening? Isn't that fun? And working with a thick paint like this is really yummy. You have to be really careful, though, because you don't want to disturb the paint that's underneath. So you just layer it on there. There. And then like this. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, I think that we'll just put in a few more. There, maybe a couple up here. And I have a real little trail of the flowers that are, that are coming down. You know, I feel so, I know I say this almost every show, but I can't say it enough. I feel so blessed that I have the ability to share my journeys with you, the viewer. I am so thrilled with that, that ability, that opportunity. Okay. Maybe we'll have a little bit of light coming out here, a little light there. Maybe we'll put a little dark because there's a band holding this guy right there. All right, and we'll bring this down and up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll come around here. And, you know, I only have a minute or two left. I wish I could stay with you longer today. I wish that I could just stay here and paint longer. Of course, you probably have some place to go too. So here we go. This is my little corner in Assisi, and a beautiful little winding cobblestone, um, narrow street in Assisi, and it's a little hidden spot. It was my treasure, and it's yours too now. I thank you so much for joining me today. Um, once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klisch with Painting Journeys. Please watch for the next show because we're going to go to Venice. Okay, bye-bye for now.